Welcome back, everyone. We'll give everyone just a second to jump in. Next up, we have two talks by two of Immersa's longtime research partners. The first talk, Educating in the Metaverse, UNINT's Journey Through Virtual Reality Challenges, will be presented by Dr. Marco Romano. Dr. Romano is an associate professor of computer science at the International University of Rome, where he coordinates research on virtual and augmented realities for enhanced education. With PhDs in both computer science and computer engineering, which is very impressive, his focus includes HCI and the impact of emerging technologies on people's quality of life. Dr. Romano, thank you so much for being here today, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much for the stage. So, what today I talk about what we are doing at the Università dei Studi Internazionali di Roma, UNINT, that is the International University of Rome, what we are doing using extended reality technologies for education. First, I will share our experience with the virtual reality and the metaverse uh, in the university. And then I discuss our research lines on learning and virtual reality. And finally, I will show a case study. So we know that extended reality technologies are effective tools for teaching and learning, but we also believe that in the next future, these technologies will be part of essential digital skills for students, along with artificial intelligence, of course. So these skills will be crucial for both personal growth and in many future job, uh, job fields. So there are new challenges in education that we must face. And we want to deal with this. And now I will show how we, we are going to deal with these new challenges. Uh, during the last uh, year and a half, uh, in uh, our university, we have set up uh, a team of researchers in computer science, engineering, and psychology to explore uh, the use of uh, augmented reality and virtual reality for learning. This team uh, integrates uh, research findings into our university courses. So we collaborate also with companies like Immerse, of course, and other research groups. And we organize also formative events for students, teachers, and even administrative staff. The major that you are, you are looking now is show, uh, shows a virtual reality training featuring university faculty members. We, we repeated this event multiple times and we involved so far over 60 faculty members. And of course, we know that to support all these kind of activities in virtual reality, we need a good inventory of VR headsets. So we have an inventory of 400 MetaQuest 2 headsets that we distributed to all the new students and, and while others headsets are available for loan to teachers, staff and other students. One of our first actions was to develop the Unintverse. Unintverse is an implementation of a metaverse dedicated to our university community. There are study rooms for practicing all the, all the languages taught in our university. Basically, they are meeting points where students can meet each other and they can share content such as slides or videos and practice together. And there is an international cafe where international incoming students can meet our regular students and where we organize the language ex exchange activities. We also have a virtual auditorium for having events, uh, some of the normal events that we organize at our university are available both in virtual reality and in the real auditorium. Other events are accessible only through the metaverse space. And there are spaces for administrative and didactic services for students. There is uh, indeed a scheduled time in which our students can meet uh, the staff. And if you want to see it, have a look to the Unintiverse, just look for it in the platform spatial.io. And finally, we also have a cybersecurity and artificial intelligence laboratory uh, that is a sp virtual space that I personally use to give orientation for new students who are in process of selecting a study program or are considering the enrollment uh, at our university. However, just to remark, we, are, we don't consider virtual reality as a replacement for the real world, but as a tool to expand our reality and strengthen our university community. Moreover, we also offer uh, VR and Metaverse lab courses in all the degree programs. 
where students learn to use specific applications for their study field, applications for developing soft skills, and also manage and develop virtual spaces. So what about our research? For sure, all we are doing is research. And we will see first important results at the end of this starting semester. However, we have some research lines that are formally open. We are studying how VR can improve soft skills, such as public speaking and emotion recognition, how it can enhance learning experience, both in classrooms and in formal, in formal environments, such as museums, how it can enhance cybersecurity awareness, how it can be exploited for mental well-being of our students. And finally, we are also conducting studies working strictly together with high schools on how to integrate virtual reality in classrooms. Regarding this last research line, uh, recently we have published a paper on the journal Multimodal Technologies and Interaction. Uh, in this study, we explored how virtual reality is perceived by teachers at all school levels, with the aim to understand the level of acceptance of this technology within schools. To achieve this, we engaged up to 120 teachers through eight workshops, held at our university. Each workshop involved till 16 teachers. They experimented with specific applications using the MetaQuest 2 headsets, including Horizon workrooms that we used for simulate real classroom dynamics in remote learning. Then Meta Horizon TV, that, that is a virtual video player that we used to facilitate group VR trips where teachers can interact with their students in a virtual video, for example, in a virtual video of a museum, of a foreign city, etc. And finally, the mess up for virtual reality situated language learning. We collected and analyzed both quantitative and qualitative data, and we carried out some first considerations on how to, how to integrate virtual reality in school in school classrooms. Uh, first one, the teachers found the use of virtual reality very interesting uh, and expressed the willingness to experiment uh, with it in their classes. They also highlighted that many of them would use virtual reality to design experiences tailored to their students' needs. And second point, this underscores, of course, the need for user-friendly applications to create virtual reality experiences without the need for programming skills. And this is a strong point for the MES desktop app, of course, because this is what this app, this application does. However, the teachers also raised other issues to consider. They emphasized, for example, the need for training for teachers to understand not only how to use virtual reality, but also the benefits it offers for education and for students. Then they stated also that even, even if students, even the students need training, because although virtual reality may be very appealing and engaging to them, using new devices, new innovative devices for the first time can lead students to become excessively distracted by them. So the device must become a common tool in classroom as a, a, smart, a smart whiteboard actually is. And finally, uh, they also stressed the importance of policies to prevent disparities among students. Indeed, uh, despite uh, now virtual reality devices are more ac accessible, uh, the cost uh, is decreasing, not all students can afford them, of course, and some students can have more advanced models leading to some kind of inequality. Okay, concluding, International University of Rome, we are on an exciting journey through the metaverse to improve learning. And our current research will demonstrate how much virtual reality can contribute to the de de development of soft skills, learning, and produce more engaging learning experiences. And I just want to say thanks to extend our gratitude to Immerse, and in particular to Trisha for her invaluable assistance. And uh, Immerse provided us with the opportunity to both experiment with such captivating Immerse applications and to present what we are doing in our university today. Thank you all for the attention. Here there is also my email address if you want to stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marco. I think it's really interesting to hear all the different ways that you're using VR at the university and all the different platforms that you're working with to, to do so. So just a reminder, we'll say Q&A till the end after our second talk. So next up we have 
exploring the impact of virtual reality on developing EFL learners' speaking skills in situated learning that will be presented by Michelle Yan. Michelle is currently a PhD student in learning design and technology at Purdue University, and she is interested in integrating emerging technologies, especially VR, into second language learning and teaching, language testing, and cross-cultural communications. She is also investigating how to adopt system thinking perspective to design immersive learning experiences. Michelle, thank you so much for being here today, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to present my research with Immerse. Uh, my project, the title of my uh, project, Impact of Virtual Reality on Developing ESL Learners' Conversational Skills for Situated Learning. The, uh, the purpose of the study uh, is to investigate whether speaking simulations in Immerse can improve EFF learners' conversational skills and understand students' perceptions of their learning experience with Immerse for situated learning. I have two research questions. First one, did speaking simulations in VR application Immerse improve EFL's learners' conversation performance? The second question is, how did students perceive their experience with Immerse in speaking simulations for situated learning. Before talking about the project, uh, here is a very brief literature review. As we know that EFL learners, they face great challenge in conversational speaking because they often lack access to authentic context, authentic learning experience. And VR, however, can provide authentic, realistic, contextualized, and real-world communication task and learning experience. VR has been used in improving English speaking activities in education field for a long time. And research has found that more interactive, context embedded, and immersive learning environment can be generated in VR learning experience. And also VR can reduce speaking anxiety, promote motiv motivation, provide greater enjoyment in speaking activities. The theoretical framework for this study is situated learning. Situated learning means knowledge is only present in situation where learners must participate in the process and explore the materials in the context to, to truly understand the significance and usefulness of the knowledge. We explored explanatory sequential mixed method design we have quantitative data and we have qualitative data. And finally, we interpreted both kinds of data. Participants and context, we have enrolled 16 freshman English majors at a large public university in China. Then we divided the 16 participants into six students in one group, divide them into two groups. As we know that uh, Immerse can accommodate eight students at maximum in one learning session. Then we conducted six 90-minute sessions. This is supplementary language enhancement activity on a non-credit basis. So actually this research was conducted in summer 2023 in the summer break. So this is a non-credit, this is kind of extra speaking activities for students. Uh, we have the same instructor who has more than five years teaching experience online, but he has no experience teaching VR. Okay. So here is a research procedure. Okay. First, we divide 16 students into two groups. Then we have a pre-survey and a pre-test. Pre-survey mainly concerns demographic information and their prior experience with VR. And pre-test, we choose the scene barbecue yard barbecue in immerse and have students have a freestyle speaking for 10 minutes talking about their most memorable travel experience then we conducted three trainings on how to use immerse one session training with the instructor and two sessions of training with the students then later we have six speaking simulations in six scenes in immerse 
Then after that, we have a post-test, we have post-survey, and later we have a semi-structured interview. Here, I would like to give you some examples of the scenes in Emerge. Uh, we have a learning activity in airport. We teach students how to check in the airport and how to go through security check. And also we teach students how to order fast food in a restaurant and also how to shop in a shopping mall. So this is some examples of scenes we used in Immerse. Data sources, we have two kinds of data, quantitative and qualitative. For quantitative, we have pre-test and post-test design, and we use paired sampled t-test to analyze the results. And also we have pre-survey and post-survey, and we ask students to read their overall perceptions of the Immerse. And those results are calculated by percentage. For the qualitative strand, we have a semi-structured interview, and we analyze the results by them uh, thematic analysis. Also, we have some open-ended questions in post-survey as students to talk about their experience in Immerse. So data instruments, we use rubrics, that is students' oral English observation metrics revised. Uh, this rubric is to read pre-test and post-test. And also we have pre-survey, it's about their demographic information, and we have post-survey asking about their overall perceptions. And those surveys are adapted from validated survey from published journals. And the interview protocol was adapted from Harriton and Oliver on situated learning. So here I would like to share some research findings. For quantitative findings, we answered the first question, did speaking simulation in VR application immerse improve EFF learners' conversation performance? So we conducted a paired sample t-test. Here is the results that results review a statistically significant difference in test scores. And it was, yes, a large effect size. Among five areas of speaking performance, vocabulary, fluency, and grammar improved more than comprehension and pronunciation. And about students' overall perception of their learning experience in Immerse, they exhibited positive attitudes towards most of the aspects. They feel VR facilitated their engagement and it's an active learning experience and that they feel in the future and they will still use VR to practice oral communication and they just have great interest in participating in VR and also they feel it's a safe environment for learning language. But stay 3.5 felt that using VR gave them a sense of playing rather than engaging in instructional lessons. Some of them saying that they feel like playing video games in VR. For the qualitative findings, and we generated five themes in open-ended responses and the semi-structured interviews. Students emphasize the authentic context in Immerse. Uh, some of them even say, oh, I never take the airplane before, and it's a really kind of good experience for me to have this virtual flight, and this experience is really kind of interesting. So this authentic, they feel there's no much big difference between e um, VR Immerse and actual uh, learning environment from uh, actual reality. So the themes, authentic contacts in VR have better understand the speaking topics and can better retain the memory of words and sentences and can keep students focused and curious in their learning process and can motivate students' interest in learning and help knowledge transfer to real life. So limitations and implications. The uh, first one is a novel effect because according to the pre-survey, none of the students have any experience with VR before. So they feel very excited and the experience is really kind of new to them. So they expressed a great interest and enthusiasm in learning. And also the next limitation is a small sample size. We only have 16 students and each group include eight uh, students and hoping the future just to have more larger sample size.
limited activities and learning time. We have six activities. We have 90 minutes learning time. But according to the research, multiple exposure to VR is beneficial to language learning. Also, instructors in experience with VR platform, because this teacher, even after one training, but it still need a lot of time for him to explore new functions in Immerse. So every class, he found some new features and he tried with the students. So it takes some time. And the last one is the technical issues. And because this experiment was conducted in China, maybe there's some access problems and the students, they can only, this is, uh, we're investigating text, a desktop version of Immerse, not HMD-based Immerse, but desktop-based Immerse. And, um, they have to log in through Edge, browser, they cannot log in through Safari or Chrome, and sometimes they will be kicked out of the platform suddenly, and it takes some time for them to log in back. And this kind of uh, internet interruptions and sometimes really kind of uh, interfere their learning experience. So that's it, that's about my research. Yeah, any kind of questions and uh, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michelle. Let me see if we have any questions in the chat. I did have a question for Marco that I was thinking about. Marco, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you are managing 400 headsets, like the logistical aspect of that, you know, setting all those up, keeping them updated. Have you come up with any like strategies for for handling that many headsets at a time? Okay, simply each student that, that has the headset is in charge to to manage okay. the headset and to up, up, update it and install the applications and we have also for, formative events on how to do all this kind of stuff so they can they can attend to this kind of events in presence or in remote and and they, they can do then all, all all this kind of stuff at home Okay, that's and, and and then we have a team of of technical people doing this for for the headsets that we have in our university. Okay, and Jelena was asking, how did you raise the funds for four hundred headsets? I, I I don't know. I I, I cannot. I don't know how to answer to this to, to this question sincerely because this was I, I you you know there are managers that that yeah. uh, that do this kind of yeah. things and take this kind of decisions. I, I don't I don't know if there is a kind of found dedicated to to this. Yeah, so it was like the university who decided this, yeah. not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. We do. We are right at time, but I'll just end with Leah's question. She was wondering, Michelle, if your research will be published soon in any journals that she could access. Actually, I submitted this manuscript long, long time ago, and it's always under peer review. I check it several times a day. It's still under peer review. Hopefully it will be published soon and I'd like to share it in ResearchGate. That sounds great. Well, we will definitely keep our eyes out for that. I know the publication process can be very, very tedious waiting to hear back from journals, but we are right at time. So we'll stop there. Thank you so much to everyone who jumped on for this session. Next up in five minutes, we will have a panel about using emerging technologies like VR and AI, as well as others in higher education. So again, just a reminder, we'll have you all briefly leave the Zoom room and then we'll get our panelists set up and you can join after that. But thank you so much again, Michelle and Marco, for being here. Your talks were super interesting and I know the audience got a lot out of them. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye.